so hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you welcome back once again to another session of pib 247 in today's class we will be talking about the pib news from 25th to 27th of january 2023 and now january is coming to an end and jaise jaise din beet rahe hain waise waise exam jo hai wo aapke paas aa rahe hain so please don't lose out this time and just gear up yourself for the upcoming examinations for whatever exam in whichever you examination you are preparing for just make sure ki this would be your last attempt aur iske baad aap apna koi bhi attempt nahi dene wale hain right so let's talk about the very first question guys and let's start with the session with this <clears throat> where will the first g20 chief science advisors round table be organized under india's g20 presidency so that's very straight forward question let's talk about the news that we will come back to the question so basically uh, for now there was a planning meeting which took place of the g20 chief science advisors round table right and this meeting was recently held in online mode now this meeting in this meeting basically the agenda topics and planning for the proposed high level round tables were discussed right now talking about g20 chief science advisors round table so it is nothing but the uh, you know coming together or you can say a round table or a conference or a meeting of all the chief science advisors or their equivalent of the g20 member nations where they will there uh, these members these chief science advisors will discuss all these common science and technological issues of the g20 member nations right and the first meeting will take place in the month of march 2023 at hyderabad the second one will take place in the month of august At Bangalore in Karnataka. All right. So I hope this is clear. Is se zada padne ki zarurat nahi hai. And when the meeting will take place, and usme kuch important hoga. If there would be anything important in that meeting, we will discuss that. Right. Currently, there was a planning meeting which took place regarding chief uh, chief science advisors of G20 nations. Right. So the first meeting will take place in Hyderabad. Option A is the correct answer. Question number two. With which organization Ministry of Ayush has signed an MOU to work together for the promotion of medical value travel in Ayurveda and other traditional systems of medicine? Right. So there was an MOU which has been signed between Ministry of Ayush and India Tourism Development Corporation. Right. India Tourism Development Corporation is a corporation under the Ministry of Tourism. So both of these have signed an MOU. now this mou what is the objective of this mou so basically the objective of this mou is uh, you know promotion of medical value travel it is the promotion of medical value travel in ayurveda and other traditional systems of medicine now you must be wondering what is the meaning of medical value travel so nothing but medical tourism right medical value tra travel means medical tourism only so it is defined as the travel for the purpose of maintaining improving or restoring health through medical intervention and in india there is an organization which is mvtci medical value travel council of india which promotes the medical tourism it has the objective of promoting the medical and wellness tourism in the country it is a section 8 company section 8 means not for profit company under companies act of 2013 and it works under the ministry of commerce affairs right Now, as part of this MOU, the Ministry of Ayush will provide training to the officials of ITDC, India Tourism Development Corporation. Now, this training will be about sensitizing them about the medical value travel in Ayurveda and other traditional systems of medicine. Also, the uh, according to the MOU, the Ministry of Ayush will identify tourist circuits which have immense scope to promote medical value travel in Ayurveda and other traditional medicine systems. right so that is all about this news and the organization in news is itdc which is india tourism development corporation option d is the correct answer i hope this is clear and now let's talk about question number 3 so i think question number ke numbering mein thoda issue ho gaya hai so i will change uh, i will make the changes in the pdf don't worry where has the smart ceos conference on data and technology inaugurated to enable peer learning and exchange of ideas so that best practice may be adopted across all smart cities and this smart city ceo conference of course took place under the smart cities mission right it took place under the 
स्मार्ट सिटीज मिशन विच वॉज लॉन्च बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड एंड फिफ्टीन एंड अंडर दिस मिशन हंड्रेड सिटीज हंड्रेड सिटीज आर बींग ट्रांसफॉर्म राइट हंड्रेड सिटीज आर बींग डेवलप एज स्मार्ट सिटीज अक्रॉस द कंट्री एंड ड्यू टू कोविड नाइनटीन रिसेंटली नॉट रिसेंटली आई बिलीव फ्यू मंथ्स बैक दिस मिशन द टारगेट एंड अंडर द मिशन द कंप्लीशन टारगेट द कंप्लीशन टारगेट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट अंडर दिस मिशन वॉज एक्सटेंडेड टिल द मंथ ऑफ जून टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री राइट सो दिस स्मार्ट सीईओ कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन डेटा एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इट इट रिसेंटली टूक प्लेस इन पंजी इन गोवा नाउ दी ऑब्जेक्टिव वॉज टू एक्सचेंज आइडिया सो दैट द बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस मे बी अडोप्टेड अक्रॉस ऑल द स्मार्ट सिटीज ऑफ कोर्स इट वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स हेडेड बाय हरदीप सिंह पुरी who is also the minister of petroleum and natural gas in uh, coordination with imagine panji smart city development limited right there were part, uh, there, there was a participation of ceos or municipal commissioner of all the 100 smart cities along with the officials from central state government industry and knowledge partners right now this the i have provided some basic information about the smart cities mission which i have which i have already told you right so you can give a read in the Uh, uh, from the PDF. So where did it take place? So it took place in Panji. Option A is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number four, India Energy Week 2023 is the ma first major event that will take place under India's G20 presidency in February 2023 in Bangalore in Karnataka. It follows India's pledge at COP26 to cut. Emissions to net zero. By which year India aims to cut emissions to net zero? Very very easy question. बहुत धूम धड़ाके से सरकार ने इसकी एडवर्टीजमेंट करी थी और ये बहुत सार बहुत टाइम तक न्यूज़ में रहा था that we will cut emissions to net zero by the year 2070. So that is the answer. But talking about India Energy Week 2023, so it will take place in the month of February next month in Bangalore in Karnataka. And this Energy Week. will follow india's pledge at cop26 which we have taken to cut emissions to net zero by the year 2070 right it will be organized by ministry of petroleum and natural gas officially supported by federation of indian petroleum industry and there will be uh, the participation participation from all the public sector undertakings all right so that is all and yeah i already told you the answer 2070 question number 5 Consider the following statements with respect to advance authorization scheme, and you have to identify the correct statement. Now again, a scheme in news, although not much important, but yes, you never know that our, uh, that the examiner uh, will ask this question. So why is it in news? Because DGFT, which is the implementing agency for this scheme, which works under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, has notified the amended rules under the advance authorization scheme. Now these amended rules for what? this amendment has been done this amendment has been done for simplification of calculation of composition fee now what is this composition fee don't worry us pe bhi aayenge so composition fee calculation will be simplified with this amendment to extend export obligation and help in ease of doing business but wait what abhi humne do teen din pehle hi ek scheme padi thi jisme export obligation extend kiya gaya tha now again we are talking about export obligation so how would be able to differentiate between these two scheme that scheme was epcg export promotion guarantee scheme right export promotion for capital goods epcg export promotion for capital goods scheme that was the name of the scheme now the basic difference between these two schemes is that epcg is for uh, you know under epcg scheme what government is doing government is providing of uh, the you know the wave off of uh, the custom duties or the import duties on the capital goods right on the capital goods however in the advance authorization scheme the same thing is being provided for raw materials or inputs so that is the basic difference between these two scheme i hope this is clear now let's come back to the news composition fee composition fee is nothing but it is a fee which is levied if the exporter is unable to timely export the product For which duty-free import of inputs is made, right? Composition fee का मतलब क्या होता है? Let's say there is an exporter. Let's say there is an exporter X, right? He has imported certain uh, certain inputs or raw materials and have and has taken uh, you know the duty-free 
the, the, the import was absolutely duty free, right? And now why government is providing duty free import so that the <coughs> raw material is sasta pade for cheaper raw material so that the cost of manufacturing will go down and the manufacturer will be promoted to, you know, uh, the, 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 fact, the manufacturer will be motivated to export his products. Okay. Now let me explain it again. Ek bar fir se, isko explain kar deta One second, let me erase all this. Yeah. So I believe the difference between EPCG and advanced authorization scheme is clear. Now talking about composition scheme. So let's say this is an exporter X and he has imported, he has imported certain amount of inputs or raw materials for manufacturing or for production of any product Y. Right. Now the government has provided duty free import for this input, which he has imported for the manufacturing of this product. Why? Right. Now what will happen? Why government is doing this? Government is doing this for promotion of export of this product. Why? Right. Now, if the exporter is unable to timely export the product for which he has availed the duty free import of inputs, then in that case, he has to pay a fee that is known as what composition fee. All right. I hope this is clear. Now advanced authorization scheme, I hope abhi clear hoi gaya hoga. So the objective, the broad objective is to make India's product competitive in the global market. It was launched under the foreign trade policy of 2015 to 2020, which is, uh, which is currently going on. Because it extended, ho thi, uske baad abhi tak koi nahi aai hai. Uh, ministry of course is Ministry of Commerce and Industry and under it, I already told you exemption from payment of import duties is given to raw materials or inputs required for the manufacturing of export products. However, under EPCG, EPCG, right? What happens under EPCG is that the waiver of import duties is given for the capital goods, for the capital goods like machinery, equipments, in sab ke liye diya jata hai usme. So that is the basic difference between these two schemes. And now let's identify the correct statement. The scheme is being implemented by DGFT, correct? Under it, exemption from the payment of import duties is given to capital goods. No, it is given to inputs or raw materials. The implementing ministry of the scheme is not Ministry of Finance, it is Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So only one is correct. Option C will be the correct answer. Question number six. Now this is about fast tag. Total correction via fast tag. I hope you all know the uh, uh, what is fast tag. On National Highway and State Highway Fee Plazas in 2022 has witnessed an increase of approximately 46% as compared to 2021 collection. By how much percentage the number of fast tag transactions has been increased in the year 2022 as compared to that in 2021? So the question is about the number of fast tag, uh, 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 the increase in the number of fast tag transactions, right? So let's talk about it. So. The news is that total electronic toll collection via fast tag on national highway and state highway fee plaza in 2020 was 22 was rupees 50,855 crores, which was approximately 46% more than that collected in the year 2021. That was 34,778 crores, right? Number of fast tag transaction in 20, uh, uh, 2022 was 324 crores while it was just 219 crores in 2021 till January 2023. The total number of fast tags issued is 6.4 crores and the total number of fast tag enabled fee plazas. The number is 1181 in 2022. It was 922 in 2021. All right. And the number of fast tag transaction has witnessed a growth of 48% in 2022 as compared to that in the year 2021. So the comparison has been done with respect to the previous year that is the 2021 and all these data are for the year 2022. Okay. So how much percentage the number of fast tag, uh, fast tag transaction has been increased? So 48% it has been increased by 48%, right? Let's talk about question number seven then, which ministry will be organizing the 14th edition of Asia's largest aero show, Aero India 2023 in Bangalore with the theme, the runway to a billion opportunities. Again, very straightforward question. It will be organized by Ministry of Defense 
and it will be the 14th edition and it will take place in Bangalore in Karnataka right at Yalahanka Air Force Station where in Bangalore Yalahanka Air Force Station the theme will be the runway to a billion opportunities organizer will be the Department of Defense Production which is of course under the Ministry of Defense right and of course the Ministry of Defense is headed by headed by come on Mr. Rajna Singh right it will be the largest ever aero show organized at Air Force Station Yalahanka in total area of this much square meter and these will be the uh, sideline events of Aero India 2023. The Defense Minister Conclave will take place with the theme of speed which is shared prosperity through enhanced engagement in defense. There will be a CEO's round table and there is, will be a Manthan startup event and Manthan ceremony. All right. And this sideline event is because RBI in the last year uh, uh, that uh, what is that event? Rise in a dialogue case, side events pooch liye the. So, isliye, you never know what they are going to ask in the examination. So, it will be organized by Ministry of Defense. Option D is the correct answer. And now, guys, let's move ahead to the questions in short, which do not need much explanation. But before that, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join the Telegram channel. This is the Telegram channel. The link is in the description. And if you want to ask anything related to examination, you can follow me here. The same ID is for Instagram and for Telegram. Now question number seven, where Ministry of Information and Broadcasting is organizing the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Film Festival, SEO Film Festival to mark India's presidency at SEO. Now can you tell me where are the headquarters of Shanghai Cooperation Organization? Please write down on the comment section. So this uh, SEO Film Festival uh, is being organized in uh, Mumbai. Option C is the correct answer. Question number nine, the country's largest power generator NTPC group recently crossed the capacity of 71 gigawatt with successful completion of trial operation of first unit of 660 watt North Karanpura super thermal power project. So where is this power project located? Very straightforward and direct question. So now if the examiner uh, want to ask any question from this news so he will ask two three he can ask only two three questions number one is where is it located number one which group is uh, you know building it so ntpc group right and what is the uh, power what is the total uh, capacity so three into 660 megawatt all right so it is located in jharkhand option c is the <coughs> correct answer question number nine where will the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, headed by Narendra Singh Tomar, be organizing Krishi Mahotsav, Pradarshini Evan Prashikshan? Pradarshini Evan Prashikshan, right? So it will be organized in Ladakh. Option A is the correct answer. Question number 11. Election Commission of India has celebrated 13th National Voters Day. Now, okay, let me ask you one more question here. Who is the Chief Election Commissioner of country? Come on, write down in the comments. So, <clears throat> Uh, Election Commission of India has celebrated the 13th edition of National Voters Day on 25th January. What was the theme of this year's National Voters Day? So the theme of this year's day was nothing like voting, I vote for sure. Nothing like voting, I vote for sure was the theme of this year's National Voters Day. Question number 12. Where will Ministry of Electronics and IT will host first India Stack Developer Conference. Very direct question. It will take place in New Delhi. Option E is the correct answer. Question number 12. Who has shared the 10th meeting of Group of Infrastructure Committee to address existing inter-ministerial issues with regard to implementation of various infrastructure projects? It is an important question directly related to the economy part of ESI, Economic and Social Issues. So this meeting was shared by the Minister of Road, Transport and Highways, Nitin Gadkari. Question number 14, Made in India Mobile Operating uh, System Bharat Bhar OS. Iske mein to aapne suni liya hoga. So which IIT has developed this OS? So it has been developed by IIT Madras. Once again, IIT Madras has shown that why is it always number one? IIT Madras is the correct answer. Question number 15, which digital initiative of Ministry of Law and Justice headed by Kiran Rijiju developed under e Courts Mission Mode project has won the Digital India uh, Award 2022 in the category of Digital Empowerment of Citizens 
and National League Governance Award 2122 in Gold category. Right? Very direct question and very important, I would say. Very important because it is about the digital initiative and digital governance these days are in news too much. So this initiative is Judgment Search Portal. Option B is the correct answer. And the last question for today, demo run of low carbon cruise vessel name SB Gang Gangadhar. Gangadhari Shakti Man hai, powered by methanol blended with diesel was recently flagged off on Brahmaputra river. This vessel will run on uh, how much percent of methanol blended high speed diesel. So the diesel which was used as MD 15, which is 15% blended with ethanol. So option C is the correct answer. All right, guys, so that's it for today's session. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. And yeah, thank you so much. I will see you in the next session on Wednesday. Goodbye. Take care and God bless.